Thanks for your time. And thank you, Jim. I think a good way to start is to ask you simply what motivated you to stand for mayor as an independent candidate. Yeah, thank you very much, Jim. Actually, what motivated me to stand for the post of the mayor as an independent candidate is the fact that the the past mayor, Ken Livingstone, and the present mayor, Boris Johnson, have failed to meet Londoners needs. You know, Londoners are frustrated. Londoners are annoyed. People's lives are miserable. They are, our neighbors are not safe. Londoners are hungry. Londoners are jobless. And because of this, I decided to step out as an independent candidate so as to champion the cause of Londoners. See, Londoners are not actually interested in parties. They are interested in individuals that will serve them, that will meet their needs, individuals that understand the pains they are going through. <laughs> Ken Livingston does not understand this. Boris Johnson doesn't have a clue. And yeah. that was why I decided to step out to champion the people's cause as an independent candidate mm -hmm. representing the people and not just a party. So what sort of person are you and what kind of background have you got? Um... All my life I've been involved in providing service to the community and basically that is what politics is all about. Politics is about providing service to humanity, service to mankind and that is what my life revolves around. I was a secondary school teacher when I left university in 1990 and I taught English language in secondary school, though that was in Nigeria. But the most important thing is that for 11 years when I, when I taught English, most of my students today are successful medical doctors, lawyers, engineers, managers in almost all the countries in the world. We have many of them in the UK, in America, and we still get in touch. They are successful and they are doing well. And when I left teaching, I worked as a police community support officer with Metropolitan Police. So I was working with the ordinary man on the streets. Not just the ordinary man on the streets, even the so-called rich and the average and the poor. I was mingling with them. So I got to know what their problems are, what their needs are, what the pains are. And because I was a community support officer, I had access to a lot of people that opened my eyes to their pains, to their anguish, to their suffering, which the present government and the past government were unable to, were, were, were unable to solve, and the present government is not solving either. And I believe I have the sagacity, the selflessness, uh, the, 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 the sacrificial lifestyle with which to serve people effectively, to make their lives better. To affect their lives positively. That was why I decided to step out to contest as an, as an independent candidate. So you mentioned you worked as a PCSO. Yes. And I noticed one of your policies on your on your website is to give PCSOs real powers. Yes. What do you mean by real powers? So what, what I mean by real powers is to give the PCSO the power to stop people, search them when the need arises and when they deem fit and to also arrest. Now, why did I say so? You find out that the PCSOs are being called plastic. Mm -hmm. They are being called fake police officers because almost everybody knows that they don't have any power. When I was having as a, as a police community support officer, there were so many incidents, so many things that I saw that I could have dealt with instantly. But because the law did not allow me to deal with it, not that I couldn't deal with it, the same thing applied to my colleagues, but because the law did not allow me to deal with it, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't deal with it. So many times I've seen people driving mm -hmm. without seatbelt. I've seen people driving using four wheel driving, and they'll be looking at me straight in the eye, and they'll be smiling and they will walk away. And I don't have the power to stop them. Mm -hmm. I don't have the power to do anything. And if we were to call the police officers, before the police would get there, they would have zoomed off. And there were times whereby, as community support officer, I saw people dealing. I know that this guy had drugs on him, but definitely I couldn't stop and search him mm -hmm. because I don't have the power to stop and search him. Mm -hmm. 
But the funny thing is that by the time you would call the police officer down, the guy would have zoomed up. So I felt that if the, if the, uh, the PCSOs had been given the power, or if they had the power to stop and search and to make arrests, we we'll realize that people will come to respect them more. They will function better. Mm -hmm. Crimes will be reduced drastically. So one of the top policies on your side, or the top policy, is on the fares yes. and on reversing the increase of the fares that Boris Johnson just brought in at the beginning of the year uh, and working towards free travel for students. Yes, please. Now I think a lot of people in London will be very much for reducing mm -hmm. the fares. You know, I think most people feel that the fares are too high. But how would you pay for that reduction? I'm not going to reduce transport fare. Mm -hmm. My policy on transportation is throughout my four years in office, there will be no single increase in transport fare. Mm -hmm. There will be no single increase. It will be very difficult to reverse it. It will be time wasting. It will be causing unnecessary trouble. Mm -hmm. well, mine is, throughout my four years in office, whatever I made when I get into office, that is what is going to stay on till I leave the office. Londoners for the past eight years have suffered yearly increase in transport fares without any meaningful change to the services being provided. Now, let Londoners enjoy four years of non-increase in transport fare. Then after the four years, we will sit down and discuss. Is there a need for increase in transport fare? Mm -hmm. Then if there is any need, Londoners will speak themselves. They will move ahead from there. But throughout my four years in office, there will be no single increase in transport fare. When I was looking through the, uh, your policies, there didn't seem to be very much there on the green agenda. I was wondering where you, how you feel about the environmental issues. I'm passionate about it because I believe that we must not expose our world, our lives to danger. We must not expose it to danger in any form. I am going to robustly support every environmental idea, every form of pollution I am going to act to kick against it. Yeah, there may not be in my in my policy I did not make any categorical statement mm -hmm. about uh, any green issue because this is something that we see every day. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants his area to be polluted. So that is why I did not focus on it because it's just it's, it's, it's like it's like living. Nobody wants to die. Okay, I think one of the one of the difficulties you're going to have to overcome in the mayoral election is that. The media, certainly, and most of the public see it as like the Ken and Boris show. It's going to be about those two individuals. Um, how are you going to get noticed in the, in the campaign? Well, thank you very much for that. And it's, this is one opportunity, or, or one avenue <laughs> for getting noticed. Mm -hmm. And thanks for giving the opportunity to actually, uh, to actually speak with you. I'll be reaching out to various people, not only me, with those people that are in my campaign team. We'll be meeting people one-on-one -on, -one on the streets, knocking on their doors in every ward, in every borough. I'm not the only one that is doing it. There are so many volunteers that are also working with me. And what we're also going to do is, that as time goes, we are going to put adverts in the various newspapers. We have the various wards and boroughs. That is what we are going to do. What are you hoping to achieve, other than being elected mayor, what are you hoping to achieve by running? Do you think you can uh, influence the agenda, political agenda in any way? Yes, I can. And what I intend to achieve is to ensure that Londoners eat well, live well, and are gainfully employed. See, I intend to create a better London, where Londoners' lives, properties, neighborhoods and businesses are safe and prosperous and all these are covered in my policy. If you take a good look at the policies, my policies are aimed at ensuring that Londoners eat well, live well and are gainfully employed and that their lives, properties, businesses 
and neighbors are safe and prosperous. These are the things I intend to achieve. Because presently, Londoners are not eating well, they are not living well, and they are not gainfully employed. Presently, neighbors are not safe. Lives and properties are not safe. And these are the things I intend to reverse. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much, Jim.